Hi, it's Dwyer, GamblersAdvisory.com, on Roku, Dwyer Boxing News, also DwyerSportsBetting.com. Remember, the opinion you should follow should be your own. Just consider this video to be a second opinion from a complete stranger online. <clears throat> Let's talk about a few things. First, the Floyd Mayweather Saul Alvarez fight card has been finalized and the Arislandi Lara versus Austin Trout fight is not on it. In its place, they have a couple of very intriguing fights. The first is Ishi Smith, 154 pound champion, against one of my favorites, Carlos Molina. That's a very serious fight. Understand, Ishi Smith is very highly thought of in boxing circles, right? He's been a sparring partner for elite fighters for years. He's beaten people like Powell Wolak. You remember he gave Wolak his first loss. Carlos Molina, by contrast, is also much better than advertised, in my opinion. He gave Julio Cesar Chavez Jr. his first loss. An argument can be made that he beat Arislandi Lara, right? And of course, he was teaching James Kirkland the art of boxing. When, of course, a freak ending deprived him of the win in that fight. And of course, that ending involved a corner man stepping into the ring. Um, you know the rest. Well, I believe that's a great fight. I also think. The Pablo Cano, Ashley Theopane fight is a great fight. Understand Cano, in my opinion, beat Pauli Malignaggi, right? Cano, of course, was fighting an inspired fight earlier against Eric Morales. He also just went the distance against Sugar Shane Mosley. I believe Cano is underrated. Now, Ashley Theopane is fascinating. What I want people to do is I want people to look at the film of Danny Garcia. That's right, Swift. The big puncher Danny Garcia. The guy who destroyed Amir Khan. The guy who busted up Zab Judah's face. Right? Well, when Danny Garcia fought Ashley Theopane, he ran into... A hand speed disadvantage, right? Theo Payne was hanging tough for that entire fight, right? Understand, Theo Payne has already been in the ring with world class opposition and has held his own. So that card is great, and of course, that card has the headliner fight and the Lucas Matisse fight. So I think that Mayweather. Saul Alvarez card is a great card that's definitely worth a look. Keep in mind, folks, that card has already shattered the box office record for the state of Nevada, right? So every Las Vegas fight you've seen in your life, just understand this card has the biggest gate. And, of course, understand in the main event, you're dealing with two unbeaten fighters. Okay, let's shift gears. A lot of people have hunted me down on Twitter and are talking about Deontay Wilder against Sergei Lakovic. Right? The argument is, and these are hardcore boxing fans, that Deontay Wilder is raw, and I agree with that. Right? Deontay Wilder isn't as good as the public thinks. Let me say, I agree with that statement too, right? When I think of Wilder, I think of a big, tall guy with a long reach who's really just trying to set up a right hand, right? He's not what I call a chess player. He's not Brian Jennings, in my opinion. Now understand, I use Brian Jennings' name for a reason. It's because Brian Jennings was the last man to face Sergei Lakovich, Deontay Wilder's opponent. And of course, Jennings was able 
to stop him. Lukovich quit on his stool and realistically had to quit because the fight had turned in Jennings' favor, right? Now, here's why I'm hesitant on the fight. I agree that Deontay Wilder is a big-time opportunity for the right fighter, right? As I said before, I think he's raw. I don't really think we learned that much from him blowing through Audley Harrison, right? I'm not sure if Wilder knows how to fight inside, right? I thought Wilder looked amateurish when Audley Harrison was falling to the canvas. You actually saw him windmilling in the ring. I don't think Wilder, quite frankly, is a sophisticated boxer. One man's opinion, I know I'm sounding hard, I understand he's an unbeaten fighter, bronze uh, Olympic medalist, 100% uh, knockout ratio, right? That's fine. Statistically, he looks great on paper. I'm just telling you I'm a skeptic, okay? Here's the problem. Boxing is a young man's game. No matter how great the fighter, and with all due respect to Bernard Hopkins, Fighters have expiration dates, right? When you start watching a guy and the guy looks like his stamina isn't what it once was. And keep in mind, Lakovich hasn't gone the distance in either of his last two fights, right? Um, when, when a boxer's stamina starts to leave him, and when the boxer's punch resistance starts to leave him, and looking at Lakovich fights, he looks like he's getting hurt. You know, he's in battles, right? Seems to have a problem maintaining distance. And then when he gets hit, he gets hurt. There are a lot of miles on Lakovich's odometer, right? When that starts to happen and you're handicapping a fight, you cannot assume that you're dealing with a guy who's operating at his best. I believe it's a mistake to think of Lakovich against Shannon Briggs years ago, right? That Lakovich probably beats this Lakovich, right? This Lakovich hasn't fought in more than a year. He's rusty. Deontay Wilder has been much more active than Sergei Lakovic, right? And so, while I understand the odds are tempting, I'm on the sidelines on that fight. You know, I see an aging vet who, quite frankly, hasn't won a match since 2010. I agree, Lakovich, at his best, is more skilled than Deontay Wilder, right? Wilder, to me, is more talented. By that, I mean Wilder's right hand is a one-punch knockout shot, right? Wilder, if he hits you with it, can literally drop you early. You saw what he did to Audley Harrison, right? Wilder's talented. He's big. He's coordinated. He's fast, right? He's talented, but he doesn't know the sport. He can't play chess like Lakovich can. Lakovich is more skilled. He knows what to do in certain situations, but Lakovich is also rusty. Lakovich also hasn't won in a while. Lakovich's punch resistance seems to be down to me. Even the Shannon Briggs fight that I mentioned earlier, Lakovich was winning that fight handily, then gets stopped late in that fight. Right? I don't feel comfortable with either guy. If it were a 12 round fight, maybe I'd think differently. This is only a 10-round fight, folks, right? Let me just point out, too, Lakovich didn't make it 10 rounds in his last two fights. This is only a 10-round fight. You would think that if you take Wilder to the deep end of the pool, since Wilder has never gone the distance, maybe he drowns. But here the pool's not that deep. It's only 10 rounds. So I'm on the sidelines. I appreciate all the tips, all the gamblers are giving me here online. I understand that you're getting ridiculous odds on Sergei Lakovich. If this were Lakovich circa 2008, I'd leap at the opportunity. 
Unfortunately, my calendar is telling me that it's 2013, right? I'm on the sidelines on that fight. Anyway, um, that's how I see it. Let me hear from you. Let me also talk about one more fight. I see I have some time here. Keith Thurman against Robert the Ghost Guerrero. That fight is being discussed. Let me just say this, and I know it's not, it's not the way the fight was reported, but I felt that the first, let's say three rounds, that Robert Guerrero threw down against Floyd Mayweather. And keep in mind, Mayweather dominated the fight. In fact, he, he won those rounds, right? But I thought the strategy was perfect, right? Guerrero didn't try to corner Mayweather up on the ropes and run into him like Victor Ortiz did. Rather, what Guerrero did was he tried to be aggressive. He had the jab working, right? He was shooting it on Floyd. He was trying to hover right up in Floyd's face and force Floyd to work. Now, the reason why he got beaten up in that fight, right? Just look at Mayweather's high power shot percentage. is because he was fighting a great fighter who could literally throw a very straight right hand. Mayweather's right hand was the story of that fight. And keep in mind, it's framed with a left hook, the left hook that dropped Juan Manuel Marquez, right? So you're worried about the left hook and Mayweather's able to come right down the pipe with a straight right hand. And let's remember, Guerrero is a southpaw. They claim the way to beat a southpaw is with a straight right hand. Floyd Mayweather has one of the best straight right hands in boxing. Keith Thurman, in my opinion, does not. I think Thurman's a hooker, right? He's throwing punches with a loop. Understand, in boxing, in my opinion, angles are everything. So, Guerrero might not have been able to have handled the straight right hand. But I think Guerrero might be able to handle intermittent hooking. Right? He couldn't handle the non-stop hooking of Orlando Salido years ago in the expunged fight. But an intermittent hook hooker, I think Guerrero could handle that. Let me go one step further. I'm not making a prediction on that fight here, but let's just say I hope the public understands that it's only because Floyd Mayweather is Floyd Mayweather that Robert Guerrero looked as bad as he did in his last fight. Right? Guerrero's still a prime fighter. If Guerrero comes in against a hooker, and keep in mind, we don't know how Thurman does against a slick southpaw. If Guerrero comes in against a hooker and is able to hit that jab, and I know Thurman looked great moving against Diego Chavez, but understand Guerrero is much savvier than Diego Chavez in terms of how he goes about things. He's not just going to leap in. He's not always front foot, right? The question is whether Keith Thurman can use movement as well as Floyd Mayweather, a master at movement, right? I'm not sure if I know. You know, so... Keep an eye on that fight. They're talking about having that fight happen in November. I'm just here to tell you that few guys use length better than Robert Guerrero, right? Keith Thurman, a hooker, is he going to be able to replicate what Floyd Mayweather did? There are times in that fight, by the way, where... Mayweather's just standing there leaning forward. 
right? Guerrero comes in. There's a pause in the action. Then Mayweather, in the blink of an eye, gets off a picture-perfect straight right hand. Is that Keith Thurman's game? Isn't Keith Thurman's game a little bit more rhythmic? And can't Guerrero play with Thurman's rhythm? I think that's a fascinating fight. That's definitely a fight that I've circled as one of those moments in boxing. Let's definitely keep an eye on it and hope it happens. Let me just say this too. I understand why Guerrero wants to fight a young lion, right? He wants to get back in the den. He just got beat by Floyd Mayweather and wants to get back in the saddle. What I don't understand, and I really don't, is why Keith Thurman, at 147 pounds, would want to dance with Robert Guerrero. The ghost is dangerous. Maybe that's why. Maybe he's a competitor taking on all comers. But I actually think style-wise, there are better fights for his talent at 147 than Robert Guerrero. Especially when, you know, Guerrero doesn't have a title right now. Well, we'll see what happens. Uh, that's a fascinating fight. Let's all keep an eye on it. Let me know what you think about not just Guerrero Thurman, but also the Lakovich deontay Wilder fight that I mentioned earlier, as well as the Ishi Smith-Carlos Molina fight. And, of course, the Pablo Cano-Ashley Theopane matchup as well. Thanks for stopping by.